So I watched the Seppuku Squad anime. No! It, uh, wasn't very good. Hmm? What happened to you, DC? You used to make high quality animated films and TV shows. You know, stories that defined heroes for an entire generation. Now we got the Justice League collabing with Ruby. Now is that better or worse than a teammate named Superman? Right? Wrong! Suicide Squad Isekai is exactly what the name says. It's an Isekai with a Suicide Squad. Harley Quinn, Deadshot, King Shark, Clayface, and Peacemaker are all sent by Michelle Obama into a strange new world to extract resources or something. It's not that important. There's the trademark fantasy world with magic monsters and snooty nobles, but what separates this isekai from all the others is that this time, one of our main protagonists is a sexy clown girl. And, uh... Yeah, you know, that, I think that's really it. The show plays out pretty much how you'd expect it to play out, sequel bait and all. There are a handful of twists and turns along the way, but attached to a story so formulaic and generic, they don't do much to make the series memorable. There are flashes of a good show that pop up every few episodes. I mean, this is still Wit Studio, and occasionally they show you why everyone still remembers their name. <laughs> But if there's one thing that Suicide Squad is not, it's consistent. Characters will look drastically different depending on the episode, and it's the same thing with the fights. The first episode has these really slow fights that look kind of off. It's like they tried to make something more realistic, but it came out choppy, and there's virtually no impact to any of the hits. Other fights ditch the attempted realism altogether and go for something more cartoony and silly. And then you have the handful of fights where the animator's locked in. But for the most part, it's a very bland looking show. Uh, this is subjective, but I don't like the way these people look. Half of them don't even look like they're from the same show, and none of them are people I particularly care about. At least not based on anything that the show showed me. I mean, I guess Deadshot was alright, but the other guys? Uh, King Shark likes to eat things. Peacemaker is voiced by Dio. Hey, Rick Flag, you know, he's there. Not too fond of Clayface, to be honest. Uh, all he does is make the same unfunny meta film jokes every episode. But then we have Harley, the only one people cared about when the show was being marketed. And believe me, she's really important to the story and absolutely needed to be sent into a fantasy world with two trained killers, a walking shark, and a guy who can transform himself into just about anything because she's cute. I mean, what do you want me to say? Look, I haven't seen either live-action Suicide Squad movie, but I do remember the animated one, Assault on Arkham. And the reason Waller puts the psycho fem cell on the team in that movie is because, well, they're assaulting Arkham. The warden uses his birthday backwards for practically all of his passwords. How do you know that? I used to work here. I gotta ask now, why is this show an isekai? I mean, I guess I kind of know the reason, like isekai is popular and safe and Warner Brothers ran out of ideas. I mean, I can picture it now, a boardroom filled with out of touch executives asking each other, what do the young people like these days? They like Harley Quinn, right? And an isekai, that's always big. <laughs> and Mori Calliope. <laughs> they really could have had something here with a Suicide Squad anime. You don't believe me? Just look at Edge Runners, the thing this show was clearly trying to be. It's very interesting to compare these two situations. WB and CD Projekt Red both made a game people hated on day one, but both of them had deals with anime studios that everybody loves, and they both just hoped to God that the anime would bring the people back. It worked for Cyberpunk, not so much for Suicide Squad. <laughs> All right, that might be an unfair comparison. There was never any hope for this game. But still, the anime could have been great if it weren't an isekai. Like, imagine if the show had followed three different suicide squads for three episodes each on unique missions in our world. You could have the main character be the only one who's on the squad for all three arcs. This could be your Deadshot or Captain Boomerang, you know, someone who's a fairly popular bad guy, but still sane enough to work well with Waller. And as for the other members of the teams, well, fill them up with people you aren't afraid to kill off, and then actually kill them off. Not everyone, obviously, but enough to make you concerned when you see a villain you like in a tight spot. Believe it or not, people care about the villains from DC, but no one cares about these rando fantasy people. 
All right, I don't mean to criticize this anime for not being the anime that I would have wanted most, but I really can't resist because it doesn't seem like anyone wanted this anime. It just sorta came out and it's probably gonna get memory hold faster than the Scott Pilgrim anime. And the thing is, it's not even that bad. It's just so forgettable, it's almost impressive considering who's involved. It's animated by the same studios that made the seasons of Attack on Titan everybody loves. And it's written by the guy who made one of the most popular isekai anime out there. You know, the one where the characters all die like 80 times? I mean, it sounds like the perfect fit, but it just did not work this time. And I don't see how I can blame either of these two because the last time this team up happened, we got Vivi. But this is not Vivi, it's a shameless cash grab with a couple of cool fights and a tired gimmick. Would I recommend watching this? Yeah, you know what, sure, yeah, watch it while you do your dailies. Anyway, until next time, Ave Maria, Deus Volt, and a big thank you to all the cultured.